So this time we're going to be designing small gift boxes. I call them ring boxes. Here's two examples. Probably won't make them quite ornate like this unless you have a lot of patience to watch through along a video. But the basic idea of a small lid that fits over a small base with a lip to hold the lid safely in place is what we're going to be working toward. So first I'll close that down. Started a new work plane here. As always, I make it orthographic view and drag a ruler out. And then we'll get started. So first drag a box out and change it to 50 millimeters wide by 40 millimeters deep. And this is going to be the base and we'll copy it to make the top of the box. I'm going to hold down Alt and drag this back. Now I have a copy for my lid when I get around to making that. So we're going to make a box with walls that are four millimeters thick and so in order to do that I'm going to copy this by hitting Control D, hit H to make it a hole. I'm going to hold down Control and hit up four times to raise it four millimeters off the previous one. And then I'm going to subtract four from either sides of my 50 millimeter wide box, which is 42, and subtract four from either side of my 40 millimeter dimension. So 40 minus four minus four is 32. And now I've got the hole. It's just not in the right position. I always like to do my alignment with the alignment tool. So I selected both of the box and the hole. I hit L to bring up the alignment tool, and I align it in these dimensions. So sometimes Tinkercad has a hard time telling what you want. It's not recognizing the alignment there, nor is it recognizing it there. Oh, but it did. They're aligned. Okay. And so we're just going to group those together, and now I've got the base of the box. I find the red box somewhat difficult to see the details on. Let's go to brown. So here's my lid, uh, and let's make this kind of a treasure box shape. So drag out a roof and rotate it 90 degrees around the base, and then rotate it sideways so that you get this orientation. I hit D to drop it down to the build plane and I want it to be roughly half of the height of the lid here so the lid is 20 millimeters high we will make this 10 high by 10 deep and it's going to be a hole so hit H to make it a hole and then I select the hole and the box and I press L to align them and I want them aligned to the side like that I'm going to stretch the hole out to cover the entire base and then I'm going to duplicate it with Control D move it in that direction hit M to flip it and then I'm going to align the new one with the roof by hitting L and now they're both aligned and I could group them go ahead and I would have the outline of my roof but I'm going to instead of that I'm going to copy the whole thing Hold down Alt and drag them out because we use one of these to make the hole that is inside the lid. So go ahead and I can group these. There's the outside. This is going to be the hole. And just as before with a base, the hole that goes in the middle of the lid is going to allow for four millimeter walls <coughs> around it. So I take my roof piece and I'm going to subtract the same as I did from the other one. So instead of 50, this will be 42, which is 50 minus 4 minus 4. And from the 40 millimeter dimension, I'm going to subtract 4 and then 4 again for the two walls on either side. It's 32. And then I have to just move this one angle back in. I can do it manually like this, or I can move it inside, select the hole in the box, hit L to align them, and now they're aligned. So I group these guys, and I've got the hole. Let's make it transparent so we know what we're, recognize what we're doing here. And it will fit nicely right there. Now, 
what I haven't accounted for is the fact that the hole I've made is the same height as the lid, so I need to move it up. So I hold down Control and I press the Up key four times and group these and I've got a lid. And it's going to fit perfectly on top of this, but it's not going to really align with the box because it'll just slide off. There's nothing to hold it in place. So what I need is I need a little lip around here and I need a little cut hole cut into this lid part to keep it from sliding off. There's lots of ways I could do this. This is just one I'm going to show you. I'm going to hit Control shift g or ungroup these boxes. I'm going to take this hole, excuse me, and I'm going to copy it out here by holding down Alt. And I can group these back together. And this is the size of the hole, right? Let's raise it until it's the same height as the top of the box by putting a work plane on top of the box with a W key. And I press D to drop it to the top of that work plane. So now it's the same height as the box. Get rid of the work plane by pressing W and clicking somewhere else on the screen. And then the lip, I know, I want to be, let's say, two millimeters wide. Uh, so I need to add two millimeters to either side of this. So 42 plus two plus two is 46. And 32 plus 2 plus 2 is 36. And actually, let's undo that. Control Z, Control Z. Now I've got this. Let's duplicate you one more time. I'm going to make this a solid by pressing S. And then I'm going to make it, as I said earlier, 46 and 36. And I want the lip to be two millimeters, two millimeters high, so I make it two high there. Then I need to align these two on each other. Actually, interestingly enough, I didn't even need this hole here. But I could use the previous one. In any case, this seems like uh, I've got this way too big. Uh, you can see I entered 46 instead of 36. All right, align these around their centers, group them, and now I've got the lip that I need. So I'm going to put that over here, and that will be a lip to hold the lid on. Now, let's make it brown, group these guys. Now I've got the base of my box done. Okay, now I need put the same hole here as an inset. Uh, let's take this guy, ungroup it, and take this piece here that I just made, hold down Alt and drag it up there. And I can group these guys back together. And this little lip that I made it's almost big enough, almost perfect to be an inset if I were to make it a hole, like so, and cut into here. But the problem we'd have is this whole inset hole would be exactly the same dimensions as this lip. And I know from lots of experience that imperfections in the printing process will mean that an exact fit will mean not a fit at all. Uh, this hole will be slightly smaller than the lip uh, extends out uh, and the lid won't close. So what we need to do is we need to make this slightly larger. Now you'd think I could just drag the hole out. That wouldn't really work because you see if I do that then it's no longer going to cover this part I need cut here. So what I need to do is re remake this piece. So I'm going to move it back up where I had it so it's clearly visible and I'm going to ungroup this little hole by control shift G and now I can change the dimensions which is currently sorry about that 46 long by 36 deep I'm going to make it one millimeter 
wider, which will make it half a millimeter on either side wider. So from 46 I go to 47, and from 36 I go to 37. Now I need to recenter it on the hole. Select both, hit L, center them. Come on, Tinker Good. Now we should be centered. So I'm going to make sure I've got the hole selected. I hold on shift, I click on the red box. They're grouped, they're selected. Now I need to recenter it over the lid. So I select the lid and the red lip. Hit L, hit the center, hit the center. Turn the red part into a hole. And then I'm going to hit control and down arrow twice and sink it in. So now I've got a lip. Ay, ay, ay. Didn't quite work. You see what happened? I must have had the hole selected at the same time as the red box when I increased the size of the red box. So I'm going, I'm hitting Control Z to undo things right now. 42, 32. Okay, that should work perfectly. Let's just take it down a bit. And this is going to be 47 and 37. Okay, so like the two, align them, align them, group them. And align the lip with the base. Good. If I've done it right, we will now create the hole I want. Yeah, it's still doing that. Well, you know what we can do? We don't even need that middle part. Because I don't really care if there's a hole in the side of my hole. Control down, down, grab the two, and now there's a perfect lip there. Okay, so the way you test these to be sure you've got a functioning fit is make at least one of the parts transparent. See how I did that? Select the object, go up to the solid, and click the transparent button. And then you just position it where you want it. So I'm going to move it on top of this box to its ending position. And then look at it from all the angles. And as you can see, the lid comes down perfectly, leaving a slight, this is a half a millimeter gap here and a half millimeter gap there to allow for imperfections in printing. And on front, there's a half millimeter gap and a half millimeter gap. Ta-da! Then we have a little treasure box that would look okay. Nothing too spectacular about it, but they would print nicely uh, and fit together well. Now, that's about as far as you probably want to take things if you are still early in learning, but if you want to stick around and see how to make a hinge on this, I'll go into that next.